Hi, uh, Michael Crow here. I want to today try to walk everybody through this notion of <clears throat> the evolving, technologically sophisticated uh, Arizona State University teaching and learning uh, realms. Uh, this is a, a complicated world we're living in right now uh, it, with COVID, with uh, people dispersed, with social distancing, with different ways of teaching and learning. And it's even more complicated because there's lots of colleges and universities out there that are just now figuring out that they have electricity and just now figuring out that they have the ability to project out and do new things. That's not ASU. We've been at this for a while. Uh, and so uh, I just want to sort of portray to all of you exactly where we are, how we have evolved, and what it all means. And so I've got this slide together on the realms of learning, and I want to really uh, make a few uh, really important points. And most important is that unlike a profit-seeking uh, 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 entity that calls itself a college or a university, uh, they're very different kinds of creatures because they don't have what we have at our core, which is what I call the knowledge core. The knowledge core for us is the thing that we as a faculty have evolved from and we as a faculty contribute to. It's the entirety of the stock of knowledge of our species. Everything we know about the science of XYZ, behavioral science, social science, uh, physical science, uh, engineering science. Uh, it's everything that we understand from the humanities, everything that we understand from languages and linguistics and uh, uh, musical expression and art history and you know all of the things that we are. So in the core of knowledge are our theories, our assumptions, our models, uh, the tools that we have, uh, the tools that have made modern business uh, possible, the tools that have given us an understanding of global climate change and all of its uh, future impacts. In that core of knowledge sits the entire intellectual identity, the entire intellectual framework for our species. Uh, and uh, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, it's in there. Uh, and that's where it is evolving. That's where it's changing. That's where the theories are being updated. The theories are being replaced. The models are being updated. The models are being replaced. Our understanding is being updated. History is being better understood all within that core. Around that core of knowledge then and emanating from that core knowledge, core knowledge is everything in the gold area, what we call the university itself. Our university is made up of faculty and staff and schools and departments, and we have a massive world-class library. Uh, we have uh, laboratories and the ability to do almost anything. Even in COVID, you need high-speed robot, robot COVID testing systems, we built them. You need new ways to sample the presence of the virus, our folks uh, develop them. You need to work on vaccines relative to the virus. We're working on it. You need models to predict the movement of the virus. That's coming out of our centers, coming out of our programs, coming out of our groups. We want to understand the psychological impact of the virus on um, uh, people's lives, on families, on structures. We want to understand the economic impacts. Well, that's what's coming out of the university itself. So the university is tied to this core of knowledge. We contribute to the core of knowledge. We draw from the core of knowledge. And the faculty and all of our assets are in the gold in the way that this uh, chart is set up. And so down here in this little realm here, uh, that's where we really uh, are who we are and do what we do. Give or take 5,000 faculty members, 20,000 plus support staff, an unbelievable set of assets drawing from and adding to that core of knowledge. Then on the upper half of the chart are the ways in which we uh, create our realms of teaching and learning. And the, the most traditional realm is what we call realm one up here in the upper left, campus immersion. This is when you're able to come to the university physically, immerse yourself entirely with all of the assets that we have, and essentially be a part of the physical life of the university built around this core of knowledge. Our hope is to create the environment in which the core of knowledge through our faculty, uh, through our assets, through our learning environments can be uh, made available to you as the fully immersed student. Now we, as you can see from the chart, uh, you know, we're now also operating at ASU uh, K-12 schools. We're operating graduate programs and graduate degrees. We've got uh, postgraduate learners. We've got everything that you can possibly imagine. And campus immersion is one way to learn. It's a fantastic way to learn because of the enhanced socialization interactions that go on. Uh, it, is, it is a fantastic way to learn, and we call that Realm One. Now, in a lot of colleges and universities, that's it. That's what they do. 
That's how they operate. That's how they will operate. That's how they're going forward. But because of our mission as a new American university, as a university deeply committed to the broader success of our society, not only do we bring into realm one the most diverse student body imaginable, completely representative of the socioeconomic diversity of our society, but we also have found ways to now project out. The newest thing that we've been able to do is what we call Realm 1B, and I apologize for this kind of nomenclature. We don't really know what else to call it, but the light gray, Realm 1B. And this is where, through a fantastic set of new technologies that we call Campus Digital Sync, using our partner Zoom and Zoom technology, we're able to bring you into the full immersion environment if you're not able to be here. That is, you're able to come in and personally interact face-to-face, face-to-face participation in lectures, face-to-face participation in our thousands of small classes where it's just a few students in the class with the faculty member, face-to-face interaction with other students. So it is immersive, but it is immersive through this synchronous modality, what we call ASU Sync. This Realm 1B is how we operated the university for the second half of the spring semester in 2020 and for the, the launched summer session of 2020, we're operating in this Realm 1B, which is digital sync. That is allowing people to be fully immersed with us, but through a synchronous technology. And so it's not the same as being on campus, but it's as close as we can possibly make it. And so it's what we call Realm 1B, this second gray ring. Now, years ago in what we call Realm 2, ASU began about 10 years ago, realizing that the university, the gold at the bottom, the university could be projected out to other people who can't be here with us physically on a schedule and who can't sink in with us on a schedule and can't they can't be here they can't be here on a schedule and so we have been investing for 10 years in some of the most fabulous most advanced i call them star trek vulcan science camp level learning modalities in what we call digital immersion so digital immersion is you taking classes with us that have been computationally and uh, pedagogically, that means learning style, pedagogically uh, designed for unbelievable learning outcomes. We have thousands of courses in digital immersion realm two. We have uh, uh, tens of thousands of students engaged right now and tens of thousands of graduates of these programs. We've got programs in the arts, programs in business, programs in science, programs in engineering across the humanities, massive uh, participation in the humanities. And we've got uh, uh, tremendous STEM programs, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, And so these digitally immersive online programs are available to anybody. And they're what we call, using this word right here, a little bit technical word called asynchronous. That means you're engaged when you need to be engaged. You're not engaged with us in live interaction. Now, for some people, people that weren't able to finish college, people that are in the military distributed across the world, Uh, People that, for whatever reason, want to pick up a degree, want to pick up some courses, want to enhance their learning, this is fabulous for them. And this has proven to be a tremendous asset for us in every possible way. Now, we didn't stop there because it turns out that there's another way to learn also. And we found that with advanced computational technology and advanced pedagogical technique, we can, in what we call Realm 3, take some of our courses, a few dozen of our courses, and make them uh, what we call open scale. That is, they are, they are uh, taught in a way where you move at your own speed, you interact at your own speed, you're dealing with computational tutors, you're dealing with intelligent tutors, you're dealing with what we call adaptive learning structures. The courses are built around you. You're not interacting with a faculty member. Our faculty members and other technical experts have designed these courses. Think of them as, as lacking a better term, robot courses. These robot courses in math, in science, in economics, in other areas, uh, they are uh, built around you. They, they, they are, in this notion of digital immersion, massively open, they are built away around the way that you learn. They, are, they teach you what you forgot from middle school. They teach you what you forgot from elementary school. They take you back and work with you across each of the areas where you're having issues. And so if you're taking college algebra or if you're taking calculus, Uh, pre-calculus specifically, if you're taking courses like that, which are large volume courses for us, but also lots of people are interested in that, those courses are now designed for you. And what we're seeing is unbelievable, fantastic outcomes. 
uh, we're getting a fantastic mastery of these subjects because each and every course is individualized at an infinite scale. So that's why we call Realm 3 massively open uh, infinite scale. Now, we switch colors here and go to this orange color just to get your attention up here for Realm 4. So in Realm 4, what we also realize is that culturally and pedagogically, again, the way that we teach, there are some limits in terms of our ability to, to really uh, uh, engage the breadth of students across subjects that uh, just don't always connect or link. They're too abstract. And so this is true in a number of areas, but it's true in science and other areas. And so what we've come up with through uh, fantastic work that's gone on coming out of our School of Earth and Space Exploration, our School of Life Sciences and elsewhere, uh, we've, we've decided to sort of step back a little bit and use technology to find a way to drive forward what we call education through exploration. What we want to do in these cases, again, and this is really important, making nothing up, drawing from the core of knowledge right here in the middle, drawing from all the assets of the university, all the faculty of the university, all the tools of the university, all the knowledge that humans know. Can you build courses, learning pathways, curricula, that allow you to draw from that stock of knowledge and allow you to draw from the university, but then do it in an emotional way where you are learning through the act of exploration, which we think through the eons of the past is the way that humans learned best. Now, we can argue if you want about the word exploration or where exploration occurs or whatever, we're not trying to solve all of the problems. What we realize, which this chart tries to portray, is that drawing from the university and all that we know, we can build these exploration uh, events. And so we're working on a fantastic project right now that will be ready by the end of 2020. If I can just show you this, this is a portrayal of uh, 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 basically an immersive learning environment uh, that we'll be using in Realm 4. It's called the Alien Zoo. The Alien Zoo is a fantastic conceptualization of the company Dreamscape Immersion. Dreamscape Immersion, uh, working with its founder, uh, Walter Parks, and uh, the co-creator of this Dreamscape uh, uh, Alien Zoo learning format, uh, Steven Spielberg. Uh, the two of us were on, the, uh, on a Zoom call just the other day talking about how this will evolve, and I just want to portray this to you just a little bit. So you, the student right here, inside a scientific pod, acting as a scientist in the field, as an explorer, are transported as an avatar to this alien zoo uh, orbiting a distant planet in another solar system. The alien zoo has been constructed as a way to create and uh, uh, a way to help planets to understand how to maintain their ecosystems, how to not destroy their planets, how to understand evolutionary processes and so forth. And so you, the student in this exploration format, you then go in this pod, which is then built around you through a three-dimensional virtual reality learning experience. You, the student, are no longer a student only. You're now an explorer. Education through exploration. You can traverse this massive site. You interact with individual species. You water sample. You, you, uh, uh, you sample, you sample uh, remnants of the animals. You interact. There's other students that you're communicating with. You're communicating with them, as you can see right here, from a, a Zoom site between uh, learners in different pods, even though each of you are fully immersed in, in this experience on your own. The point being that you then take your samples as you're moving through the pod. The pod is you know, many, many uh, uh, square uh, kilometers. Uh, it's a massive interactive thing with uh, many, many species, but it's all then grounded in and connected to actual biological studies, biological laboratory work, evolutionary understanding, the study of biology and so forth and so on. So back away from the pod and you then move into a virtual reality environment with your laboratory. You then are interacting with other scientists and other explorers. I can't really emotionally express to you the way that this works, but we do know that the trigger of the explorer enhances the learning modality so much that we believe that just in the first iteration of this, which will be in the biological sciences, followed by what we might do in other areas of science or in nursing or other areas of uh, where we think this kind of virtual reality-based learning can occur, this education through exploration will greatly enhance and we think will eliminate the barriers to STEM education that exist in so many parts of American uh, K through 12 education and so many parts of American higher education. And so, so the, the uh, point for us is this 
education through exploration modality is uh, underway. Uh, we have some materials underway. We have some precursor courses underway. Uh, we have a how to find a habitable planet course underway. And then we're building this new thing with Dreamscape uh, Immersion. Lastly, in number five, just to let you know that we have an insatiable desire to take the core of knowledge in all things that are available through the university. The green zone is infinitely scalable learning. Whatever you need, whenever you need it, however you need it to advance your life, to enhance your life, to protect your life, uh, to move your life forward. We think that some universities, and in our case, Arizona State University, we think uh, that's what we're here for. So just to back up a little bit, this is the new Arizona State University. We've had a fantastic experience, notwithstanding all of the issues and the pain and, the, and you know, all of the complexity associated with COVID. We're fully operational in this realm. We're a different university. We're moving forward in new ways, and we're ready to be of tremendous teaching and learning service to you. Uh, I just wanted you to get you to have a sense of how we're working, how we're moving forward, and just to remind you that uh, uh, we can operate in all these realms at the same time because our faculty and the staff that support them and work th with them are unbelievable innovators. Uh, and it's just been a tremendous uh, pleasure for me as the president of the university to work with all of them, to be able to say to you, this is who we are, this is how we work, this is how we've created teaching and learning as an outcome. Thank you.